Okay, uh, welcome to um, History of the Middle East with Dr. Brofkin. Uh, our first video was on Iran uh, under the first Shah, uh, Pah Pahlavi, uh, and his overthrow by the Soviets and the British and Americans during World War II because they needed a corridor to supplies and because he was supposedly um, friendly with the Germans. Uh, anyway, we covered the uh, the years from 1919 to 1940-41. Uh, and, and now this would be uh, the post-war Iran. So today's topic really uh, Iran after World War II and especially the crisis of 1953, which is absolutely crucial. Uh, and the Mossadegh government fought for what was going to happen later, the rule of the Shah leading to the Iranian revolution. So uh, let's get back to the to the background. So the background is that um, World War II, Iran is pretty much occupied by the British and the American, by the British Americans and the Russians, pretty much along the lines that were used to be before. That is called the Anglo-Russian Agreement. That the north of Iran is uh, Russian, now Soviet. The south is. Uh, British. The, the new element is it's an occupied country during World War II and it, it, it is quite important because it's one of the supply routes of the Red Army by the US Lend Lease program. So a lot of good stuff came to the Soviets through the ports in Iran and the using the railway that was u that, that uh, Reza built in the 30s. So this is the situation at the end of World War II. Now, uh, during World War II, uh, Stalin's Russia, Soviet Union, they increased their influence in Azerbaijan, which is in northern Iran, and this is the industrial area, so they, they hope to stay. And what happens, the, the main idea now of the Iranian government after the World War II is to restore its sovereignty. That, that's the whole point. Uh, restoring sovereignty means to play a very careful game between the Soviets and the Americans, who pretty much re replace the British as the major force uh, and to try to gain as much as possible political independence but also economic independence that these are the two questions that the British uh, were the British Petro Iranian Petroleum Company now is uh, is turned into American Iranian oil company and so they are the ones who call the shots in uh, economic affairs now um, the uh, Prime Minister uh, is uh, Kua, Kua Wan, uh, and he is trying to play a very careful diplomatic game, pleasing the Soviets, pleasing the Americans, uh, to maneuver his way out. His most important political objective is to get the Soviet troops out of northern Iran. Uh, and for that, he, he does all kinds of promises to the Soviets that the Communist Party would be legal, that they would be, have friendly relations, uh, and so forth. And, and in a way, they, they do. Uh, he, he does succeed. The Soviet troops are withdrawn. <coughs> Now, in 1946, uh, there's the, the Cold War begins uh, in earnest in, uh, in, in between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Uh, and uh, how does Iran fit into the picture? Uh, it is not a priority for the United States. The priority is Turkey and Greece. So Iran takes kind of a side I I importance, not, not the big importance. Uh, the, the United States basically is interested in one thing, to keep pumping oil pretty much for free, as the British have done. Uh, and they have no particular other interest in Iran, which is a secondary uh, front, so to speak. Uh, but they do come up with the Americans with a so-called seven-year plan of development, which is very interesting to look at, uh, because basically uh, it, that plan is not a plan. In other words, there's no plan for industrial development. Uh, there's no plan at all for uh, development of infrastructure or agriculture. It's really a plan to pump more oil and to get the Iranians to buy American military equipment and to fight the communists. So, so that's pretty much, it shows in a way the kind of a emptiness of American approach to third world countries in the region, including uh, to Iran, uh, that there was no particular interest uh, in developing these these uh, countries. Important uh, moment is the year 1950, 
when you have uh, a new elections and the national front uh, wins elections. The national front is a kind of a coalition of center-left political parties uh, that comes to power. Uh, and um, uh, uh, and the prime minister uh, uh, that was appointed was killed. Uh, by uh, Fedarin, which is a kind of Islamic organization that will play a big role later on. Uh, so you have a kind of a political crisis, and then after here comes Mozadeh, and he's absolutely crucial. He he's the person that would play a, a very important role in it is what is going to happen in Iranian politics uh, in these years. So Mozadeh's policy is now that the Soviets are out is to get the. Uh, a fair deal on oil that that's his priority so he wants to um, uh, pursue a kind of a uh, anti-colonial nationalism policy now also I haven't even mentioned the word the Shah uh, at this point uh, the Shah is there because by the Constitution uh, Reza Shah of course is out uh, and but his son does become a Shah, which is Mohammed Reza, Mohammed Pahlavi. But his role is pretty much secondary. He is a kind of a nominal head of state, and he does not interfere into politics that much. He's kind of on the sidelines. Uh, it is, a, in a sense, a, almost a parliamentary republic. In other words, the prime minister is where the power is vested, and the mechlis, the, the, it is a parliamentary regime, uh, with the monarch not really being a crucial figure at all. Uh, Mozadeh is the prime minister. Uh, and he again goes into uh, a very, very careful diplomatic maneuvering in order to uh, secure oil for Iran. And there was a proposal made that it would be a 50-50 uh, division. Uh, and the Americans and the British rejected it. So, so this is, again, very important steps because that would explain uh, the further crisis. The fact is, the Iranians did offer 50-50 division of profits uh, of oil, and the Western governments rejected it. But the next step is nationalization of Iranian oil, 1953. So Mozadeh essentially is probably the most important political event in the Iranian history, because everything else is kind of like a postscript. Because as soon as the, the financial interests of uh, Western powers are challenged, uh, you can almost predict what they do. They did it in, in a bunch of Latin American countries. Uh, they did it in Chile. They did it in many other places. Basically, you overthrow the government that you don't like. Uh, you stage a coup d'etat. Uh, so this is, the, uh, this is an event that, that is remembering Iran to the present day, uh, the overthrow of Mozadeh government. Uh, it's uh, it's trouble in the streets. It's uh, now it is proven that the uh, CIA paid crowds in the streets to uh, to to make uh, all kinds of disturbances and clashes between various factions uh, in order to provoke uh, even uh, fighting in the streets that would uh, put Shah on the throne, uh, or he is on the throne, but would seize power, essentially, uh, in kind of a military dictatorship in favor of uh, Mohammed Pahlavi. Absolutely proven, without any doubt whatsoever, uh, there are documents that you could look at. The overthrow of Mozadeh is the work of CIA, uh, CIA agents. Moreover, it was m almost independent of the uh, State Department. Uh, there was some struggle going on in Washington as to what to do in uh, Iran, uh, but the CIA took the initiative. And this is, again, one of those examples when the intelligence agencies do whatever they want and then uh, inform the government, the U.S. government, as to what they've done, and, and the government has to cover it up and live with it. Now, the reason I say so much about the uh, Mozadeh overthrow is because this is almost a postscript. The revolution would happen 
more than 20 years later, but that doesn't matter. Uh, the installation of a Shah who is an obedient uh, tool in the hands of British and American imperialism that would continue to rob Iran of its oil is the main cause of the revolution. I mean, in a sense, what happens later is all kind of maneuvering, which we will cover, uh, and, and Shah's attempt to modernize and attempts to get the biggest military in the world. But uh, the fact is, they, kept, they, kept, they continued to keep robbing Iran of its oil, and the person who helped the robbing uh, was Mohammed Pahlavi. The Shah, and it becomes a kind of a, an American colony. Uh, so, so that's the independence is lost with the destruction of Mossadegh government. Independence is lost, and the attempt to nationalize oil is lost. And therefore, that is the most important event in Iranian history, uh, leading to the Iranian Revolution. And on that moment, we'll stop and continue in our next segment. Thank you.